Hey dolls, it's me, Wilma Fingerdoo, and this week I am taking part in the 2022 palette tag. This was originated by Annette's Makeup Corner. I got a link for her channel down below up here. You know how I love me a link. And uh, I picked up this tag from Chloe Save the Victory Roll Demure. She did this as well. And so I'm just taking up the... She didn't tag me, but <laughs> I'm assuming that she did. And I'm going to be answering... I think there's 10 questions. And uh, just to let you know what I thought of what went on last year in the world of makeup. Now, the first question was... What was the most innovative release of the year? And because this is a palette release, my choice was the Artitude Split It Graphic Liner palette. Um, the reason that this is so great is that there's some uh, duo chromes right there. The metallics, the gold, and the silver are spectacular. I also find a lot of these, these makeup tones are um, they're just gorgeous. Also, this formula, it doesn't crack. A lot of I feel like Artitude kind of picked up the ball where a lot of other makeup companies dropped it as far as water-activated liners. And I really love this. I use this um, a lot more than I think it shows. I don't do anything special. Like I used it. I just like to define my crease. I use this lavender color right here. Is it the lavender? No, it's, it's a blue. It's like a, a periwinkle blue. And, uh, yeah, so I've got a link to them down below. Uh, I highly recommend this palette. Uh, it's one of the ones that, that uh, I was very, very pleased to get in 2022. Now, the palette that surprised me the most in 2022 is this one from Be Perfect. It is their collab with Elena. Alina. I don't even know who she is. But this is the rain palette. And the thing I like about this, this is a rainbow palette, but it's a deep rainbow. I don't know uh, what Alina's nationality is, but I'm assuming that uh, she is not pasty white suet pudding like me. And because of that, these colors are rich and deep and gorgeous, jewel tones, stunning. And I just have to say, I saw this when it was released. I didn't think anything of it because, I don't know, the pictures didn't do it any justice. I was like, oh, yeah, that's all right. And then um, my makeup enabler, David Briquette, sent me this. And I was so surprised. Like, when I saw it, I was like, oh, well, this is a lovely cover. I don't care about packaging, but this was nice. And then when I opened it, I was just so impressed by how rich all of these, even the neutral tones, they're just so rich. The shimmers, and this is Be Perfect's formula. This impressed the hell out of me. As I said, I had no intention of buying it, and i it's one of the palettes that I can't put down uh, from 2023, I'm just going to say. Uh, the palette that I regret buying the most is Glaminatrix's Nocturnal Palette. No offense to this company. I think this company is excellent. Their formula is good. Their um, customer service is above and beyond, especially they had a lot of problems with this palette. Uh, I pre-ordered it in January. I wasn't supposed to get it until February. But the PR people that got the palette early were reporting broken pans when it arrived. And I have to tell you, right there, this pan, look, it's, it's, uh, it just broke again. I've, I've, it's terrible because they delayed the release in March to address this, uh, their shimmer sh formula shattering en route. And it's not because they didn't pack it well. Like, I don't want to give you any impression that the company sucks. It does not. But um, when I got my palette, I had three broken shimmers. This one, this one, and this one. And I was just so upset because I, I also waited an extra month. It's like I waited four months to get this. And it wasn't cheap. This was almost $200 when it was all said and done because of shipping and taxes. And yeah, it made me absolutely regret buying it. Now, here's the other thing, uh, which is why I say no offense to Glamour. I should never have bought this palette. This really isn't a drag queen palette. Although I have to say, uh, this periwinkle is stunning. This chartreuse is gorgeous. Their black is one of the best. It, it rivals Salamore 
from Gourmand Girls. Uh, these two grungy colors here are, are gorgeous, but I really, I really shouldn't have bought it. But I got caught up in the FOMO. I was watching all these people talk about it, and then I saw people get it. And even with the shattered um, uh, shades, well, I didn't know that the shades were shattered until after I'd ordered one, but I saw all these people talking about it. And I went to their website, and they do a lot of uh, multi-chrome uh, eyeshadows. They're stunning. But I thought, okay, I'll, I'll get this one. They actually just released another one. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it, I, that's the one I should have bought. That's the one I should have bought. But um, yeah, again, this has nothing to do with Glaminatrix at all. It really, I should have followed my heart and not bought it when I thought, I don't need that one. But uh, there you go. Um, my favorite collaboration for 2022, it's a heartbreaker because it is... Uh, Saints, Angels, Sinners, and Gourmand Girls together palette. This is just a spectacular palette. And there was a lot of buzz about this before it came out. Uh, I got this in PR from Saints, Angels, Sinners. And then just when I got it, I don't know what, it, I, I don't want to get involved. There was uh, some kerfluffle in the makeup world between this person and that person. And I don't know what happened. And again, I didn't want to know what happened. I don't know these people. I don't know. They're not paying my rent or anything, but they're sending me free makeup. So I, I, I'll talk about whatever you send me. Uh, even if they, I hate it, I'll tell people. I love this. This broke my heart twice because they pulled it. It, it ended up not getting sold, I don't think. And then I loved it so much. Like some of the, all the shades are named after people. Like, um, like this green one down here, it's Adam and Eve. And then the black one's Batman and Robin. Like, Adorable, adorable. I was going to do um, uh, the my makeup in movies, uh, Connie and Carla, with this palette. And because they weren't releasing it, I, I decided that it probably was best not to do it. So I ended up using the Kim Chi Trixie Mattel collab. But um, oh, I don't know. This palette was so good. Uh, I I I always think the best of everybody, and I'm hoping that. Uh, at some point, uh, there can be a uh, a new leaf turned over in the the book that is uh, uh, this collaboration, and that they either revisit this or do something new. But either way, this was such a good palette; it, it just breaks my heart. So, with that said, the next question was, "What was my worst collab of twenty twenty three?" Trixie Mattel and Juno Birch. Now, I should never have bought this. This is, I'm not blaming anybody. It's not like uh, Trixie called me up and said she uh, hurt people I love or anything. Uh, there was none of that. I don't know Trixie Mattel. I don't know Juno Birch, but I really do like Juno Birch. And when I saw this and the color story, I didn't hate this. My favorite Trixie Mattel palette is her first one, Daytime Realness, the blue one. Looks like a little cassette case. It's stunning. And this kind of gave me that vibe. Um, this is a much brighter palette when you look at it in person on camera. It looks a little dull. But um, uh, the one thing that I hate about Trixie Mattel, and I will say this until she does something about it, is that she's never created a, a good black shade. And this is the black shade in this palette. And it's really just a muddy gray. Like, it doesn't even have any cool... Like, even, do, you see, do you see what I mean? And when you swatch it out... That's not black. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's black. When Trixie re released this palette, she said it was black. Oh, the black in here, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at it. Same with her planet gay, her plant gay. There's a black in that, but it looks green. It looks like a deep green, but she says it's black. When Juno Birch talked about this launch, she alluded to the fact that this was not black. And I don't know if she was upset about it or if it was... But she had a face with she So I have to say, I liked that she acknowledged that that's not black either. So um, of the Trixie Mattel formulas, though, this is very buttery. I was very impressed because a lot of Trixie, the problem I have with a lot of Trixie's um, makeups is that they're very scratchy. They don't blend well. Not a lot of pigment. These are all right. The I mean, this is only one finger swipe. That yellow is quite intense. So I'm impressed. But um, 
all in all, not not the best formula. Uh, I find I'm often needing other palettes to finish a look that I use with the Trixie palette. So, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not that I hate Trixie. Like, I, I love her hand mirrors, and I absolutely love her brushes. But I'm not... Um, in fact, I have a review of her brushes you can watch. It's, it's, I, love, I love her brushes. But her makeup, maybe for day walkers, but not for drag queens. Do you know what I'm saying? Still, I don't regret buying this, but um, it, it, it was the worst collab. If they hadn't have released this, then it would have been Trixie and Kimchi. And either way, it's still Trixie. She's getting burned. I'm burning her. I don't know why. I don't know what my problem is. My favorite seasonal release this year... Gourmand Girl Spooked, just no one's surprised by this. This was one of the most anticipated Halloween palettes, I think, in the history of Halloween palettes. And it is gorgeous. The black down here is stunning. The matte white up here is intense. Um, there are some duochromes in here. Like this pumpkin color, it doesn't even look like pumpkin, but it, it does. It goes from a champagne to an orange. Uh, it's it's spectacular. This is one of one of my favorite palettes from uh, 2022. Like the nice thing about it is you don't need to use it just at Halloween. It's got enough going on that you could use it other places. Um, the next question is what uh, palette is still on my mind? What didn't I buy that's still on my mind? Anything from Cosmic Brushes. Cosmic Brushes is a UK company, uh, and they just they, they're new. They're fairly new. I mean, I don't know if they're new last year, but I heard about them last year, near the end of last year. And everyone loves them. They're inexpensive. I mean, it's still a British release, so it still has to be shipped. But um, I wanted to go and look at their website to get a more specific palette name or something, but they're actually closed down to finish all of their Christmas and Boxing Week and Black Friday orders. So um, that's how small they are. And the fact that they're closing their site down and handling what they're handling before they get more stuff to handle impresses me. I, it, it clearly says that they want to be um, a company of integrity as opposed to just grabbing people's money and running for the door. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very, very impressed by them. So yeah, I'm not going to be buying makeup in 2023, but uh, if you're looking for something uh, and you're looking just for some new company, see some new formulas, try something new, everyone is talking about Cosmic Brushes. So check them out. I'll put a link to them down below. The next question was, what are you hoping to see next year? Well, less crap. I'm just going to say it. I just want to see less crap and more quality. We don't need another Urban Decay palette because they all look the same. They're all, they're all the same brown neutral tones just reorganized. And and, and I also want to say shame on Pat McGrath. Shame on Pat McGrath because she released a Star Wars palette for Christmas, but it was a rebranding of a palette she already had out. She just stuck a Star Wars image on the front of it and raised the price $50. You know, it was ridiculous. And I just, I just hate that. I would rather see companies release one palette a season, like a spring, a summer, uh, a fall and a winter palette, if that, maybe two a year if they're spectacular, because I won't need other palettes if you release something that's spectacular. And I just, I'm just getting sick of it. Like I, one of the reasons I don't shop at ColourPop anymore is because it's just, they're constantly just farting out another palette and they stink. I'm just going to say, <laughs> there you go. Um, uh, another question. The next question was, what don't you want to see more of next year? ColourPop. They need to stop. Somebody needs to stop them. I don't know what it is about them. When they started, because they had their own in-house lab, they were actually, they started by making other people makeup, uh, their other people's lines of makeup. In fact, they do the Kylie Jenner, um, uh, her, her lip stuff. Like uh, you're getting, when you're buying ColourPop, you're getting the Kylie Jenner stuff. Now they say it's not the same formula. I think they lie. I think they lie. I think that they do the exact same thing for Kylie as they do for themselves because they're just such a clear money-grabbing company that I can't imagine that they're going out of their way to re reset the machines with different formulas for Kylie Jenner. I mean, people are going to buy Kylie regardless. Um, but 
yeah, they 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 have an in-house lab, so they're able to turn out these palettes. If they see somebody has a lot of success with a a gray tone palette, then boom, there's their blow and smoke palette. Just boom, there it is. The thing that I hate about that is they get so caught up in these other releases that they don't keep stuff in stock. So, you know, they do have some good palettes, but you know, if you run out of stuff, you're screwed. Uh, so, yeah, I I um. I'm not a fan of ColourPop. I'd like to see less of ColourPop. Uh, I think, though, if you're looking for cheap, trendy makeup and you don't really care and you have that kind of income where you can buy something and then not worry about it in three months, then ColourPop's for you. Unless, of course, you live anywhere not in America because their customer service sucks and their delivery uh, method is horrible. You'll live and die waiting for them is what I'm saying. The last question for this tag was, what are your personal goals to improve on next year? Well, I only have one goal for next year, and that's to not buy any more makeup. Uh, I'm going on a no-buy for the year. I'm in solidarity with uh, Chloe Demure, who uh, was my inspiration for doing this tag. Um, she's not doing, she's doing a, a no-buy for 2023 as well. So I'm just going to buckle down. I have tons of makeup. I have more than enough makeup than one person would need in a lifetime, never mind a year. So I'm going to spend 2023 uh, revisiting all the palettes that I have and using them a, a couple times, not just one more time, a couple times, really kind of explore different color combinations from them and, and really get to a point where I can say whether or not that's a palette that I, I need or want or can use. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's my goal for 2023. Um, if you are a makeup enthusiast and you have makeup, uh, and you bought some, some of what I got or other stuff, um, there were lots of companies releasing lots of stuff last year, uh, then please feel free to pick up the tag and do one of these videos yourself. Make sure that you tag Annette's, um, makeup corner because, uh, as I say, she was the originator on this. And if you haven't checked out her channel, I have links to her channel down below, Chloe Demure. Speaking of down below, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. And I also have links in my description box for my Redbubble store, becoming a Patreon uh, with the rest of the Fingerdo family, or even uh, sending me a tip or do to help support this channel. Either way, I hope your 2023 is fantastic and fabulous. And thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, this is me. Ah, seriously. So much makeup. If it fell on me, it would kill me. It would kill me!